Hello, Wiki peeps, and welcome to this edition of the Wiki Tree Livecast. <laughs> this week we've got Kirsty Gray in talking with us about how to do conferencing, all things conferencing, and uh, Kirsty and I got to spend some time recently at. At uh, so, Kirsty, you probably or Emma, do you have your volume up? No, it's not me, it's muted. It's probably me then. How about that? <laughs> okay, so, it's certainly not me. <laughs> it was me, it was me. Technical glitch is uh, always on the start of a live cast. So, hello, Kirsty Gray. Hi, tell us what your, your full title is besides Ooh. care person of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Which particular title? Managing Director of Family Wise? There um, you go. Co-chair yeah, co co of next year's Ontario Genealogical Society Conference. There's two. Um, chair of the Surname Society. There you go. Secretary of Society for One Place Studies. There you go. Chair of West Middlesex Family History Society. I think that's it. Wiki Treer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, UK's number one genealogist for three out of the last four years. And genealogical rock star. Indeed, indeed. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, and what was it? Uh, oh, and chief uh, instigator at any conference you attend. <laughs> What's that? Chief instigator of naughtiness. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, Pretty much. <laughs> uh, Emma is here with us as well. Emma Macbeth. Emma, say hi. And it's not, uh, you're, you're supposed to say hi, so the camera oh, actually. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> going back to Kirsty. The camera loves Kirsty. So we're here this week. We're going to talk about conferencing and how you can take Wikitree to the conference with you, which is something that uh, is really easy to do if you really get right down to it. Um, recently, uh, Kirsty and I were at the OGS conference and we had a lot of fun hanging out and being co-instigators of a lot of stuff. Uh, and we'll, we'll be talking about that in just a minute. Really quickly, I want to talk about this live cast situation that we've got going on last week and the week before we had a little snafu with, uh, with uh, the live cast not happening because I was off in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. Sorry about that, but I'm back and the live cast will continue and uh, we're going to switch it up though a bit. Uh, instead of having a live cast every Saturday at 3 o'clock, we are going to have an official Wikitree live cast with a project featured and project uh, members being interviewed on the last Saturday of the month, every month, like clockwork going on for the rest of the, the time that we're going to be doing live cast, which is indefinitely as far as I know. Um, we will not be having a live cast every week at 3 o'clock. I'm going to say that again. We will not be having a live cast every week at 3 o'clock. Um, and this is to free me up and give me more time to do that stuff. And it also frees me up and gives me more time to do live casts like this one that we're going to do with Kirsty today, which is just more fun rather than an official featured project live cast. So uh, live cast quickies might pop up on uh, the Grandma's Jeans channel, and you'll see those and uh, get your notifications if you're a part of the uh, Grandma's Change channel. If you're not, please join so you get those notifications. Um, and also, there may be a couple of non-featured live casts that get scheduled, and we'll throw those up on the schedule, and I'll promote them like normal in our G2G, and our G2G, and the wiki tree will be promoting them as well. So, live casts continue. They are going to go on every third, every the last Saturday of every month. There will be a scheduled featured live cast. So put those on your calendars and make sure you come back and join us. That covered. So any questions about the live cast from anybody? Uh, I do. I looked over at the chat right now and I see that somebody asked, is Kirsty American? Kirsty, say five or six <gasps> words. Just, just five or six words. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I am not American. <laughs> That was pretty good. That was five words. So no, no. And I'm also not Australian. No. 
So go go for the other the other country that's really obvious when you hear me talk a little bit longer. Someone said you didn't sound English. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can I can I vouch don't for sound the, English. I can vouch for the fact that Kirsty this morning, because she's English and because she lives in in, in uh, Wiltshire, did mix up the time for this morning and was texting me at four forty a.m. my time to wake me up and tell me it was time for the live cast and where was I and she didn't have the links which was really funny because I have my phone set to do not disturb during those Thank hours. goodness. <laughs> but I certainly woke up and saw that, that Kirsty was up and ready really early this morning. Because I'm so used to being there in Canada with you and working five hours backwards to here. So uh, I worked five hours backwards from your time and yeah, it didn't work. It, no, it didn't work. It didn't work for you. I slept no. through it just sound as a baby, just. <laughs> It's all right. I just plastered it all over my Facebook that I'm a complete idiot and I clearly can't subtract or add or work out which one I'm supposed to do. And she is a genealogist. And you know, in genealogy, we believe in accuracy. Yes. <laughs> moving on, moving on. So I mentioned that Kirsty was at uh, the OGS conference. Um, she was on the committee uh, that was the leader. She was the leader of the OGS social media team. And as such, she and I spent an incredible amount of time together over that weekend. Um, and when we were sitting there, we were talking uh, to, to lots of different people. And people kept commenting to me that I had grandma's jeans plastered everywhere. And they were also commenting to me that I had WikiTree plastered everywhere. That I was like, I would walk through a room in a sea of orange or blue and... <laughs> And uh, Blaine Bettinger even said that I should, uh, after a quick change in an elevator, I had my blue shirt on when I went into the elevator. When I got off the elevator, I had on my orange wiki tree shirt. And Blaine said that I should sew the two shirts together so that I have half that's wiki tree and half that's grandma's <laughs> jeans. <laughs> I kind of like the change in the elevator like Superwoman. <laughs> yeah, I like did too. She, that, she hasn't told us if there was anybody else in there at the time, though. I will not. I will not tell you. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the thing about going to conferences, I'm going to go ahead and throw this picture up here. Um, and, and this is a picture Gosh. of have my... I, have I allowed this one to be shown? Yeah, this it's okay. So there we go. This is a picture of my kit for oh, the ODS okay. conference. And I don't have any of the WikiTree stuff that I had with me at the conference in there. But if you take, like I have grandma's jeans on my bag. I have uh, grandma's jeans business cards. I have grandma's jeans sticker on the, the credentials, the official credentials for the conference. And if my conference credentials flipped over, you saw a grandma's jeans business card. Um, so you can you can create your own little wave of orange using WikiTree stuff um, when you go to a conference. And just really quickly, uh, a couple of things that you want to take that aren't pictured here are really good shoes. Kirsty, what kind of shoes do you wear at oh. a conference? Um, I think I had Birkenstocks this year. Yeah, I, it depends. If it's if it's a cold conference, then I have proper walking boots. So if it's, you know, like when we've been to Root Tech and it's been like really, really cold, then I'll have proper walking boots and I'll just live in them and I'll barely wear anything else. But because it was warm this year when I was over in in um, in Ottawa, see, I could even say it your way. Um, <laughs> I, had the, I had Birkenstocks instead, but they're ones that are well worn in. I certainly wouldn't take brand new shoes to a conference. That would be crazy. No, you, can you imagine breaking in shoes at a conference? That would be crazy. Well, Diana takes her slippers. Diana will wear her slippers at conference. She has conference slippers. Yes. Wow. I think I posted a picture of her slippers, her ladybug slippers. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's in um, last year at Roots Tech. Let me throw up a picture of us at Roots Tech here. Um, last year at Roots Tech. Let's find a Roots Tech picture. Here is all of us at Roots Tech, yeah. and you can see that uh, we are definitely wearing comfortable shoes, all of us. Let's see how I can zoom in here. There we go. And um, we all have on comfortable shoes. In AON last year, Abby Glan showed up in flip-flops, or not flip-flops, but something something close to it. 
And uh, after that, Eowyn switched to her flip-flops, and they both said that they were really comfortable. The, the, the floors at conferences are not like your living room floors with carpeting and padding. Um, they are concrete, they're hard, and it is it is definitely uh, tough on the on the legs walking around at uh, conferences. So take good shoes. That's a really important thing to do. Um, also, uh, take water, lots of water, and a good bag. So, unless you're unless you're sneaking off, the conference this year at OGS had a uh, bar set up, and so those of us who might have, enjoy a beer in the afternoon or evening. Uh, we ended up in the bar area. Uh, I think I think most everybody ended up in the bar area at night uh, just to close things out. Um, Kirsty danced on a couple of tables. Ah. <laughs> I tell you what, your memory is a bit different to mine. <laughs> we had a good time. We had a good time. So, what is your what is your biggest uh, conference take? Christy, when you go to a conference, what is the first thing you pack? Oh, that's a good question. I tend to be a notebook person. So although I'll take all my all my electronics, I'll always make sure that I have a decent notebook that I can write people's contact details or if somebody says, hey, can you look this up? Can you give me a quote for this? Or can you help me with this? Or put me in contact with X, Y, blah, blah, blah then at least I always have something to write it down. The other thing has got to be all the cabling because with everything that I do, laptop, tablet, mobile, I don't use mobile um, data when I, go, when I go away, but if I can get Wi-Fi everywhere, then I can just use my phone to quickly you know, check things. So I have a, a bag that I actually bought in, um, in Sydney Airport that's got, it's got little separate packets for each of your cables. So I go with elastic bands. And well, it starts off with all my elastic bands with my wires done nicely. And at the end of the day, I just stuff them back in again. <laughs> but yeah, those things that, I mean, anything else I can replace, you know, if I forget anything else. Power bars, the power bars. You had a, a, quite a few power bars at the OGS conference that we were all borrowing. Um, and then I ran <laughs> home and picked up a couple of my own. Um, power bars, yeah. electronics, power bars, things to take notes with. So pens, paper, notebooks. <clears throat> and I carry what I call my Bible with me, which is um, an ARC notebook from um, Staples that you can actually take pa pages out and put pages in and rearrange them without they're a different kind of hole punch. I carry my, my ARC with me everywhere. Um, so I have that information. Uh, so I have information that I can get from people and that I can give to people very easily with extra bits of paper. Um, flash drives. This year they gave us a flash drive uh, with the syllabus and stuff on it. So taking a flash drive so you can get information as well. Money. Money is important. Um, your phone or camera to take pictures. Um, Mouse, laptop. I had my laptop and my netbook with me this year, and I, I ended up using both. Uh, one of my favorite pictures from the uh, from the OGS conference. I don't know if you have that. <laughs> I <handy>. know one. <laughs> it's a picture of all of the social media team on the back row of the opening ceremonies, and we're all sitting there with our no our netbooks or our laptops open, and we're we're all um, talking and chatting or posting about what was going on right in front of us and taking pictures. So that was a, a fun thing. Um, <clears throat> going to conferences, how, how do you normally find out about a conference that's going on in your area or anywhere that you might be interested in, Kirsty? Well, to be honest, most of the ones that I'm going to, I've kind of actively sought out and they tend to be the bigger ones. But, but you know, we've talked about Roots Tech and OGS. Um, I, I haven't done any of the other American ones. Um, I haven't Canadian ones. But over over here in England, there tends there's um we have something called Geneva, and it's not like Geneva the place, but there's um a genealogy events calendar that is on online, which is through is through the Januki site that's called Geneva so, so a lot of people still put them on there but it's just the usual thing people throw it out on Facebook people put it on their websites so if there's something in particular I think oh I wonder if 
whatever Devon Family History Society. I wonder when their conference is. Well, I can probably find it at about six or seven different places. So I just Google. Google is my friend. Right, <laughs> knowing what's going on in your local area uh, and and finding out about local conferences and. A lot of people on Wikitree talk about going to local conferences, and a lot of people ask, what can we do to um, promote Wikitree when we're at a conference? Well, um, like my handy dandy uh, clean-a-thon uh, cup <laughs> that I made for keeping me comfortable and hydrated during the clean-a-thon. It's an orange cup that I bought at a dollar store, and I printed off some Wikitree graphics to, to stick on it. and. Voila, I have a wiki tree cup. Um, <laughs> during, you have on a wiki tree do rag right now, Emma. Don't you be laughing? I do. No, I'm just laughing at your ingenuity. Yeah. <laughs> <It's too good. clears throat> you, can, you can be a wall of orange and, and have wiki tree with you at a conference. Uh, whether you um, figure out how to get a wiki tree t shirt, you guys notice I have my wiki tree clean a thon t shirt on. Uh, that thank you, Aon, who just sent that sent that to me this week. Um, and you you see in the the pictures from the uh, from Roots Tech that that WikiTree is truly a wall of orange when we are there. If you notice the uh, pictures of Julie and I, and there's the team and our silly silliness, um, <laughs> and me at some point off my feet because my feet were killing me from the concrete floors. Uh, but yeah, orange is the is the deal. And if you walk around in orange at a at a genealogy conference, there are a lot of people who are going to say, "Oh, WikiTree's here." So, um, and uh, yeah, so orange and getting getting things to further that. Let me find this page that I have up. Uh, WikiTree's multimedia project has uh, information that might help you with doing that kind of thing. So if you go over to the multimedia project page and click on Wikitree Media, um, there's all sorts of interesting things in here. Uh, and you can go uh, to download locations to Wikitree Images. And you can quickly uh, go over and you can find things like the Wikitree Globe. And there's lots of different ways of the Wikitree Globe and the Wikitree Logo. Uh, you can also pick up on logos. You can <coughs> grab uh, the little globes. And on my presentations that I do, the slideshows, I pull most of that uh, the graphics for that from these things. You can print out a QR code, which is not orange. It, can you do those in orange and they still work? I think they have to be black and white. Yeah, they have to be black and white. So there's so. all sorts of things. There's the I Love Wiki Tree. Oh, there's the Enjoy Genealogy that uh, you know about. There's there's 37 images on here that you can grab and print. They are open source and available for anybody to print. And uh, stick them on your cup or stick them on whatever and uh, use them uh, for taking Wiki Tree with you to a conference. Um, the other thing about conferences that uh, Kirsty and I were talking about um, was that when we're at the conference, I signed up for every single session at the OGS conference, and I think I went to two. I was so busy with the social media team or just holding down the fort at the social media hub, that's, that's my excuse, that I didn't make it to all the sessions that I, that I wanted to make it to. But, um, going to sessions. How about you, Kirsty? Are, are sessions a big deal for you when you're going to the conference? I know that you do a lot of speaking. Yeah, I mean, the first time I went to Roots Tech, I had absolutely no clue what to expect. It was kind of a friend of mine who I ended up traveling with said, hey, let's go to Roots Tech. And I went, what? Yeah, okay. And then just kind of landed up on the plane and was suddenly there. And it's kind of like, no plan, hadn't gone through the schedule nothing so Thank then you, started Sylvia. looking well, so, yeah yeah thanks Sylvia yeah so um so we sort of looked through a couple of them and I had a couple of things I wanted to go to but I ended up going to one lecture the whole thing and I just 
well, like you were saying about OGS mags, I just ended up with my bottom firmly planted in the media hub. And that, that was me. I, was, I felt that my job, because I was an ambassador, get out the message to everybody outside the room and blog and right whatever so genuinely I was probably the first one there and the last one out <laughs> of the media of, of most days and this year when I was there I don't think I went to any talks at all no I didn't I Not signed up at the well, last two my own, but. I signed up at the last minute for Josh Taylor's workshop on Friday and then this friend of mine uh, threw a uh, CBC interview at me, and I ended up mm -hmm. not being able to stay for the workshop. So, <laughs> but the part that I saw was good, the first 45 minutes. Um, so, yeah, it, sometimes trying to figure out what, what to go to. You, you, when you're first signing up, you have all of these things listed. And literally, if you're planning on going to a conference and you're going to every hour, you're going to go to a session not gonna happen it's it's gonna be hard because they're not all in the same building sometimes they're spread out so a make sure you have good walking shoes if you have uh, any kind of um, challenges physically make sure you bring your cane or your walking stick or your walker or your your wheelchair or whatever to be able to get around mm. make sure that you set yourself up to have a good conference by making sure that you're taken care of and that in that uh, way as well. Um, the other thing is, is that conferences have these great marketplaces. And if you sign up for a session every hour, you're going to miss out on being able to go around to the marketplace. The marketplace at OGS was spread out everywhere. Did you get to a lot of the places at OGS in the marketplace? No, it was really spread out. And I think it, because it was in different, different even buildings for some, for some of it, it was pretty hard to kind of do. I know for next year's one, it's all going to be in the same place. And certainly we're looking at getting sort of the main sponsors with more space and right in the opening, like they do at Roots Tech as well, because they've given more more money to the conference therefore they should have a better show what they're doing um and certainly when you go into the exhibition um hall at the uh, what's it called salt lake palace convention center the first thing you see as you walk in is ancestry find my past forever and all of those kind of um the more and family search i think but you know all the sort of the, what i call the more commercial ones but the, the ones that that give more money to the uh, to the conference you know the right. golden platinum sponsors and whatever so yeah uh, yeah and it's it's really it's hard to do but getting around and looking at the marketplace there's jewelry to buy there's dna kits to purchase not just from the big three, but you, living DNA, no, which door, is they were doormats. I went. I really wanted to bring a doormat back from Roots Tech. Do you remember those do, do, those doormats? I did not see the doormats. Oh yeah, they were amazing. They were just behind the media hub, and there was all sorts of you know, gene, genealogy messages on these doormats. And I was like, how much do they weigh? Can I get them in my suitcase? <laughs> That's that. that hilarious. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah they've been one, there both years. You could ship one from Salt Lake City home. Yeah, but the cost of the postage would be ridiculous. You think? So quite heavy. So uh, this this year, because we're taking, well, rather next year, because we're taking the business with us, we'll have less stuff to bring back. So I'm hoping we'll have some space this time. <laughs> and what, what business is that you're taking with you to Roots Tech? Family-wise. It's the first time, I think, as far as I know, that any UK-based genealogy company Besides has actually that. sponsored. You can find my past a UK base. Yeah, no, no, but I don't mean commercial. You know, I mean like gotcha, a company, gotcha. company, limited company. Gotcha. So, um, so yeah, I've been having a chat with them about ideas to get some more Europeans over there as well, and maybe get everybody that's British research and Scottish and whatever in the same kind of area. Oh, that's a fun idea. So, and she's talking oh. about her business, which is Family Wise Limited, which is <laughs> also branded. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And and speaking of colors, no, today is not white. Is not the color of today. No. Um, I have orange on my shirt somewhere down here. I don't know where it is. <laughs> but get <laughs> far enough. I just I, yeah. I'm, don't go any further. <laughs> anyone, yeah. <laughs> anyone sent me my new T-shirt, and so I had to wear it. It's still with yeah. tree. It's just there's some exactly. shit. <laughs> um. So yeah, no, white is not the color of today. So. No. 
we're doing conferences. Um, Kirsty is taking her business next year to Roots Tech. So if you're at Roots Tech and you're looking for Kirsty, uh, she will not be in the social media hub as she has always been. She will be manning her own booth and talking about her business, which is helping people find uh, their relatives and heirs. And I mean, you can tell us a little bit about it right now, Kirsty, if you'd like. Cool. I won't take up too long, but basically we kind of, what I say is we find people anywhere in the world. So it could be for any reason. It doesn't have to be somebody in your family history as you're going back up your tree. It could be somebody that you knew in like in college or school or something. Um, and we can kind of put you, put you back in touch. Or if you have some kind of adoption in your family, whether it's you were adopted in or you were adopted out of a family and you want to find out more about that, then we can do that too. Um, and because I've been in, involved in family history for such a long time, even if I can't do it or someone on my team can't do it, I know lots of people like Mags. <laughs> so so if, if I can't do it and I don't know the answer, then I've got a massive network around the world. So, yeah, that's kind of what we do, really. And and it's, it's it, Kirsty working with Kirsty or having Kirsty in your, your orbit sometimes is a lot of fun because she's a wealth of information and she also has such passion about doing what she does and doing it right and being ethical and it's it's interesting sometimes to hear her talking about some of the stuff that she sees going on that that she wants to fix and it's yeah, so I'll nice I'll, I'll, I'll pay the 20 bucks later thanks Max. yes you're welcome <laughs> Um, and somebody asked me to stand up so they could see the t-shirt, but if I stand up, there you go. Hey. You don't see any orange. Well, the little mm, guy. A little bit on the tree word, but yeah. The little guy. So there's the, the t-shirt. Um, and the furniture was white with dark green accents. Somebody's talking about. It had orange. Roz had orange walls as a kid in her bedroom. Huh. So she was a wiki treer before she knew she was a wiki treer. <laughs> white furniture with dark green accents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also nice. wanted to point out uh, something else that uh, we. Uh, one of the things that that I want to do for people is putting together information that people can take with them to a conference that has Wikitree and gets people connected right away to your Wikitree information. And one of those ideas was a business card, uh, a volunteer card. So we're all volunteers. And um, one of the years that I went to Roots Tech, I had a lot of people asking me for my contact information. So I created a little business card or a volunteer card that I could hand out to people and it had my name, it had some of the projects that I was involved in, and then most importantly it had my Wikitree ID with uh, all of my Wikitree information right there for somebody to be able to see, you see the example. So if you go to um, this, uh, to the Wikitree uh, media page, you'll see that there's this this volunteer card that you can print out, that you can hand out to people, you can, you can put your surname studies on the back of it. You could print out uh, the surnames that you're interested in and put it on the back. You could print out your most di uh, your most distant ancestors on the back of your card so that people uh, could uh, see what you've got going on. Um, there's also graphics that are print ready uh, so you can just click on them and save them as onto your computer and you can uh, get that information and, and create your own Wikitree volunteer card. Um, the other thing that we, we've been working on is uh, uh, reunion kits, kits that uh, information and stuff that people could take with them to a conference or to a reunion to show um, things like uh, filling out information that people have on their family. Let's see, and this will show us, this is a Wikitree uh, family uh, page so you would fill out the information for uh, your information for a family if you're at a it a, like Christy was saying that people talk to you and you want to write down their information did I say Christy it was pretty good actually I was like sitting here going you've practiced that I, I actually made lunch <laughs> at a place called Christie's today so that's it's my okay. it, was, it was all right it was kind of halfway each way so I was like that's okay. 
Ooh, so Kirsty, Kirsty was talking about being able to write information down. Well, when you go somewhere and you run into a cousin, and I've run into cousins at Roots Tech, I've run into cousins at at other conferences that we've I've been at, uh, and I've wanted to fill out some information. How fun and how easy it would be to print out this WikiTree family um, form, this family chart, and write down, get someone to fill in their information so that you have it, so you could add it to WikiTree, or you could fill out your information, and they could add it to their their file. So um, this kind of stuff is going to be in the uh, re reunion kit that uh, you could take with you to um, to a conference. Also, there are background images that you could load onto your computer so that when you are sitting at a conference doing something and someone walks by your computer, they could see the Enjoy Genealogy logo for WikiTree on your computer screen or the I Heart WikiTree um, or the WikiTree, the family tree. So that kind of stuff. And when you're at a conference, you can also do um, social media tweeting. You can tweet the WikiTree hashtag. So hashtag WikiTree on everything you do at a conference and follow the WikiTree hashtag. If, if people aren't following it, you could do that. You could follow the WikiTree hashtag um, and carry WikiTree with you to a conference that way in orange, be an orange wall. <laughs> um, and I see Hillary Gadsby is in here. Hey! Yes, and Hillary is just saying she didn't realize how important having cards with you to hand out to people was uh, until she went to Roots Tech and saw uh, how how important that kind of that kind of stuff is. Do you have business cards that you hand out, Kirsty? I certainly do. I have um, all sorts of things, usually in my backpack for all, all the societies that I'm involved in and all the hats I wear. So I usually have sort of a leaflet that someone can take away. It's usually we do like postcards for um, the societies that I be the secretary or chair because it's just easier. It's a little bit bigger than a um, you know a business card. You can kind of put a little bit of information, and we actually do them like a postcard so on the on the front it's got like an image and then on the back it's got two sides and actually the address and all the details as if a postcard you know old-fashioned style so that's, that's quite nice and um i usually have um you had on your picture as well max you've got the, the um the ribbons that we've started doing more of right i think so it started off as a bit of an american thing but we've certainly brought it over here and uh, and also in canada as well this year lots more people had the ribbons so we had long 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 very very long too long <laughs> lines of ribbons <laughs> well and also uh for bloggers for people who are geneal genealogy bloggers there's always someone who is handing out blogger beads so if you're yep. walking or if you see someone walking around with beads at a conference that usually means that they're a, a blogger of some sort they have some sort of social media presence mm -hmm. um so you and I had some discussions about doing um, presentations at conferences, and uh, Kirsty was uh, was amazing me with her ability to uh, get information together and get it out in a time in a timely fashion. I'll put it that way. Um, <laughs> when you when you have an opportunity to go to a conference or you have something that's going on at your local library. You might have the possibility where you could do a presentation on WikiTree. You could talk about your experience on WikiTree. You could talk about how DNA has helped you with WikiTree. You could talk about how doing a one name study has helped you with your research and that you have your one name study on, re on WikiTree or a name study on WikiTree. Um, I want to just pop up a really cute picture real quick here of Miss Eowyn, our forest elf who uh, did a presentation at, uh, are we all getting this? Yes. Yep. It did a presentation at Roots Tech at the demo theater. And there's the little elf, our little elf, and she's doing her presentation in the background. So how cool would it be if we had presentations that you could take and use at your local history group, your local genealogical society, you could do a presentation at your library, your local family history center. Uh, 
and we do. Wikitree has presentations. Any of the presentations that we have uh, done, even any of the live casts uh, that are feature live casts with slides, you can have a copy of those slides to take with you for um, that information. Let me see if there was one down here that we did. Oh, there, look. Here's one. Oh, no, that's the one name studies we did with Doug Lockwood. Here is a great one name studies um, slide presentation that you can take and do with yourself at your local uh, genealogy or if you want to try and uh, get into a local genealogy conference, you can take one of these slide presentations with you to do that and share the wiki tree love. Share the, share the love. So there's a whole list of presentations here and you saw that up here. Of um, Here is Michael uh, Still's presentation on the wiki tree honor code. And there we go, which which all he did was stand and talk about the honor code. That was his entire presentation, and it was one handout. It was one sheet. So there's lots of stuff. There's lots of information for you to use to take Wikitree with you to a conference. What are some do's and don'ts, Kirsty, about going to a conference? Don't schedule every single minute of your time before you go. Right. Uh, do interact with anybody that's there. I know somebody who I spoke to at the OGS conference was very, very nervous when she got there. Never, never been to a conference before. And she just got in and got on with it. You know, she, she, she was just very easy to talk to. I mean, I introduced her to, she's the lady that I introduced her to you because she had an adoption in her family. And right. she, you know, she, she just kind of, she knew nobody when she walked in the door. She knew absolutely not a soul, but she just got in and just talked to people. And she's actually volunteered to help with next year's now. That's so good. go with an open mind, you know, go with an, well, literally, because you want to just soak in as much as you possibly can. But don't schedule everything you want to do because there's bound to be something that pops up either unexpectedly or you might meet somebody that actually is really handy and you want to talk to. Oh, well, actually, I've already booked a workshop. Well, which one's the best thing to do? Right. So, yeah, kind of leave yourself with gaps. Do there's lots look, go on. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I was going to interject, there's lots of experiences to go on besides the classes, but keep, keep going. Absolutely. I was going to say, do plan the, the, the route of where you're going to go, because some conferences, particularly Salt Lake, you know, the venue is absolutely vast. And so actually knowing what room number something is in isn't all that helpful if you don't realize that actually room 178 is absolutely flipping miles away and it's going to take you like 15 minutes to get from where you were before to there, by which time you're too late and the doors are shut because it's already full. So it's really kind of scheduling what you want to do, but leaving yourself with gaps. Um, and we've talked about taking sensible shoes, but also a sensible backpack. Right. Because if you take the wrong backpack, your back is going to be busted on day one. And I cured that this year. I took a rolling bag. Yeah, mine has wheels and rucksack bag, yep. you know, on the back. So, yeah, you can do both. <clears throat> I had somebody just said something about, do we have to make our own ribbons? That would be an idea. Could just take ribbons, blank ribbons and a big, uh, big, big, uh, marker and just make your own yeah. <laughs> there are companies that sell the ribbons for conferences and if yeah. you if you look you'll find those um i actually have hanging up right behind me a couple of my ribbons from let's see ogs and from um from roots tech i mean people people get these ribbons and they hang down below their legs you notice mine has Troublemaker on, on I was going to say, Troublemaker, I see twice. <laughs> yes. So, and, and no, and so the ribbons are printed by a company. Um, and let's see, Wikitree has Descendant one year, and then this one is just where, where we collaborate, my APG. So that would be the Roots Tech um, one, and this is the OGS one. And then on the back, like I said, it flipped around and it has my business card on the back. So, um, 
survivor of the British pub night. That was the night that Kirsty was dancing on tables. And no, I don't have to have a picture to prove it. You just have to take my word for it. That was oh, the one sorry. where we lost by one point to John Reed, which I think was he should have been disqualified. Oh, what? What? Yep. Yeah. So um, they all stick together. They all have um, um, adhesive on the back. Yeah. They all have adhesive. So they have these little adhesive strips, and you just stick them together. So that's just where one's stuck together. So they just they just have little stickies, and that's how they stick to the back of your credentials as well. It's just a little sticky strip. Some of us were wondering what you meant by blogger beads. Blogger beads. I have some of those too. <laughs> <laughs> and here's some I, I had before. <laughs> here's some I made earlier. <laughs> here are the blogger beads from the OGS conference. I don't see any other blogger beads. I think I gave my blogger beads to my kids for previous conferences. So here are the blogger beads for this year's OGS, and it was since it was a Canadian, the Can a Canadian conference, there's the Canadian maple leaf. But so you just walk around with the beads around your neck and people see the beads and they know that you're a blogger and so people can ask you questions. So. Or they say, what on earth are those things around your neck for? Right. And then you, <laughs> and then say, you can well, say, blog. they're blogger beads. <laughs> and then they'll go, what's blogging? Yeah. <laughs> What, we were talking about things to do or not to do, and one of the things not to do at a conference is take your camera or your phone into a session and A, try to record it, or B, try to take pictures of the slides. That's mm -hmm. the big no-no. Big no-no. Because the syllabus for the conference will usually have uh, information about the presentation. Uh, some of the presenters, which is something that I always try and do, I try and if I do a slideshow for something or a presentation, I post those on my website so people can get the slides easily. So you don't have to take pictures. It's very distracting for someone who's trying to speak. Uh, it's also distracting for the people around you to have the light of a cell phone show up and or holding it over your head and you're, you're blocking the people behind you. Don't take pictures in, in a conference like that. And yes, Thomas McKinty always has blogger beads on. He is a big blogger, and so he walks around with it. He's a big blogger. That could be a, a derivative thing. Thomas McKenty, you are a blogger, man. Just blogging. <laughs> that wasn't as funny as I thought it would be. So, yeah, so doing presentations. Um, is there anything else um, uh, about do's and don'ts for, for conferences that we're missing? Um. Don't lose your Not tickets from my for food. No, definitely don't lose your tickets if you have to have tickets. And here's, uh, a, here's the thing. If you're at a conference, you're going to get a, conf a conference credential, wh whether it's from the OGS conference or not. This one actually has a pocket in the back where you can slip in your, your meal tickets or put um, your business cards that you pick up from other people. The uh, Roots Tech Conference is more of the general badge, but again, there's a pocket that you can you can stick your information in. If I turn it the right side up, you can stick your meal tickets and your entry tickets and all that in the back of that, and also put any papers or things that you pick up from somebody in the back of that, and then clean them out every night at, in your hotel room so that you have your information for the rest of the conference. Any other tricks you know about, Kirsty? No, I mean, I, th I think my greatest thing, I mean, the reason why I go to conference is not necessarily to go to classes, talks, workshops, or anything else. It's to talk to people. Networking. Exactly. It's as simple as that. It's And that kind of harks back to that lady I was saying about that had been for the first time. Just be open, talk, you know, and you can learn so much from just other attendees. It doesn't have to be someone that's like a social media person or a blogger or a speaker. Just the other people that are there. You can just pick brains. They had some, I don't know who the speaker was that did this, but um, I watched people at the OGS conference walking around with these big tags on their shirts that had their surname interests on it. Um, do you know which speaker it was who started that? It was a game. 
wasn't a speaker. It was actually a table in the marketplace, I think. And people were walking around with these these surnames. So you were walking through the conference, and you would see surnames that you knew, yeah. and you would go and talk to the person, and you would try and find out how you were connected or how, how some of the people uh, were connected. Uh, Hillary said that, that some people go to conferences and don't go to any of the talks. Well, yeah, me, yeah. <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did see Blaine Bettinger's. Um, I signed up for a couple of Blaine Bettinger's. Bl Blah, 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 blah. Blaine Bettinger's uh, uh, discussions, in which he did talk about WikiTree, which was really cool. Talking about WikiTree being the uh, the answer to having a global family tree with uh, DNA integration as well, which is was pretty cool. It was. Um, hmm. Do we have questions coming in from the chat? I don't see any more. No more questions. Well, and for right, for right, right now, do we want to open up uh, some of the the questions to people who might have surname society questions for <laughs> Ms. Uh, Ms. Rockstar genealogist Kirsty Gray? <laughs> I don't mind. I'll try and answer anything. If I don't know the answer, I'll hopefully be able to at least direct people in some sensible fashion. Um, what uh, you, I heard you talk a lot about your silophant. Um, surname study. Do you actually have that hosted at a on a website somewhere? I do have a website. Um, it's very much a place marker rather than anything else because it's the age old demon in my life, which is time. And <laughs> so I do have um, literally a page about the study, a page about how I got involved in a kind of a contact um, thing. But that's pretty much it. The vision. I'd say four years ago, was to put all the journals, because I used to write journals each quarter. No, not each quarter. Uh, it was three a year. So it coincided with, as in school holidays, when I used to teach. Right. So I used to do one in the Easter holiday, one in the summer, and one in the um, Christmas holiday. So the idea was to put all of them up there. And then rather than having this monumental effort in a particular time of writing like 16 pages, getting the damn thing printed, blah, blah, blah. I was just going to do it electronically. That was for probably nearly five years ago, I think. It's it's just the time thing. You know, I, I left the uh, the day job thinking, oh, yeah, I'll have loads more time to do my own family history now. <laughs> yes. No. Well, and that's one of the things that uh, I think you and I have talked about is that I would like for you to get your silophant, uh one name or name study up on Wikitree. Because that would, that be, would a, be lovely, but a good place to do it. And, <laughs> but... um, well, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you with that. We need to get that. We need to get your your. Oh, and yeah, I was going to tell you the name of that uh, Jedcom, which was Gray Dash McCarthy. Do you remember that? Nope, nothing to do with me. I don't have a Jedcom called Gray Dash McCarthy. Well, no, it, you you uploaded. See, the file was deleted. So you need Someone to ask a question. Yeah. Um, so Charlotte's asking, and, and this is a good question I'd like to know too. When one starts their own one name study, um, how does one manage that? What are we supposed to do with it? <laughs> God. <laughs> you start here. That's, that's like an hour. <laughs> I mean, just right, the basics. Okay, well, I, I don't think it's even that because that's such an open-ended question because, like, I wouldn't say to somebody, hey, why don't you go and do a surname study? It's not the kind of thing that you just kind of, like, wake up one weekend and go, oh, yeah, I think I'll go to a surname study. It doesn't kind of arrive like that. It tends to be it's, – it's organic. You land up with this crazy surname in your family history or something that you've researched and you go, it's like the most weird surname ever. So you find yourself in it. So how to manage that is like, you know, what? How do you research it? How do you store it? How do you archive it? What do you do with it? I mean, that's like, that's a book. That's literally like a book question. I mean, in terms of, I'll try and have a take on what Charlotte was aiming at. In terms of how do you go about beginning it, I would say the most important thing and the one thing that if I went back and realized I was doing a ruddy surname study and started again is 
making sure that you source everything just like you do on Wikitree, you know, going over and doing your source checks because I've got so many things that I copied when I was about 12. And I'm still here and Emma's still here, but I'm thinking that Kirsty dropped out. And what a what a wonderful picture of Kirsty to drop out on. Oh, it, it's gone too. Right when she was giving us what we wanted to know. Yeah. Um. And just just for fun, while she was talking, I went to Chris Witten has uh, the Witten DNA or the Witt, Witten name study, and so I pulled that up so people could see it. Um. And here's the Witten one name study, and you can see that he has, um the goal of, of adding and improving all Wittens to Wikitree. Um, and so down here, the project template, the meaning of the Witten last name. He's also looked for derivations, different spellings of, of Witten. Um, and uh, he also did some interesting uh, research into some of the demographics of uh, Wittens and where Wittens are and who Wittens are and uh, that information, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Uh, get back to the Witten, there we go. <clears throat> Derivations. Um, and then looking looking at uh, people from the uh, different censuses. Then there, uh, there are some early Wittens by location, and this is U.S. Wittens, uh, like to 1830. So um, they're... Um, Oxfordshire, England is the so supposedly the the root of the Witten um, or Devon of the Witten name in England. So to North America, Maine, uh, and he's got a lot of people listed in Maine with information about their first um, or second um, appearance in sourcing. So he has all of that information. You can see obviously that Chris has a lot of family in Maine with information. Uh, and then on down, he's got people that are listed in Maryland, New Hampshire, and all of this um, is is great information. He's got information about the Witten DNA and Witten DNA projects, uh, and he has information up about the haplogroups, the different haplogroups for uh, the Witten uh, DNA studies, and he's also got information up about Witten. Um, discussions going on in G2G, on genealogy, uh, the Witten family guest book, and he's also got a listing of famous Wittens, and then Wittens on Wikitree with the complete Witten index, which is a great thing for any name story, and then there's a bunch of sources that he has down here for Wittens as well, uh, which really goes on, doesn't it? Um, and then there's uh, a memory that Chris posted about uh, DNA uh, databases, and that was back in 2009. Kirsty, we have you back. Yeah, my God, I was like trying to get you my way through a tunnel in the dark. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem, no problem. I was just, in the meantime, I was showing uh, Chris Witten's Witten DNA, uh, Witten name study, which is, uh, it really has been growing here in the, just since 2009, I guess, when he started this. Um, Anyway, so it's a really it's a really good name study that he's got going on, and Kirsty, back to you. So you were discussing uh, managing, your information, managing a surname study, right? Yeah, I don't I don't know where you lost me. So I was I, I was talking about numbering everybody. Did you get that bit or not? No. Nope. Okay, so that was probably the bit where I disappeared. I think down the black tunnel. Um, so you know, I was saying that if I could go back and change something, I would make sure that I sourced everything correctly because when I was really young, I didn't really know that I had to do that. I was just doing it and it was interesting. And then I kind of went, oh goodness, where did that come from? I've got amazing marriage um, records. I have no clue where they are because it's like the middle section of the page and it just doesn't have anything on it that actually highlights what it is. In terms, I mean, it's got the the, the the date, but it doesn't actually tell me where it was because I didn't write it down. The other thing I was saying was about numbering the people in your study because if you suddenly put the wrong William in that tree, and he is no longer then connected to that tree, if you number everybody so they each have an individual identifier, then it doesn't matter if you take him out of one tree and put him in the other. And all the references that go with him to interject will there, still be with him. 
WikiTree uh, takes care of that because everybody has a, an identifying ID. So WikiTree takes care of your numbering. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Kirsty. No, 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 that was fine. I was finished. You <laughs> I, don't, I that may not answer what Charlotte was actually asking because, as I say, managing your study is like such a huge question. So I don't know if she has like a follow up question if I didn't manage to answer what she wanted. Well, my follow up question is um, okay, I like the numbering idea, making sure you, know, you keep everybody straight, but what's the first thing we should do? We start, we, I recently started a one name study and right now it's blank. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's and what's, what's the name that you're doing it on, Emma? Zorns. Cool, blimey. Spell <laughs> Sorry, that? spell that? Yeah. <laughs> spell, and I'm going to write. Go on. Z-O-R-N-E-S, or it can be without the E. Z. Wow. Or it can be Z-O-R-N. That's awesome. So where did you find that? Is that in your, uh, your own family? That's in my tree. Yes. Wow. And there's a I big want one. There's a big argument over when you get to a certain point who really married who. And so the line is split on WikiTree right. right now. Um and there's just nobody's been able to find sources to Okay, so I think my suggestion, bearing in mind how you started out, is you've obviously collected some references to that already. Right. And you've probably found some others that you're kind of thinking, um, and how do they fit? I think the best place to start is with all those different sources that you have and just trying to structure the ones you have. And then if you have your own family that you know is yours, and then all these other random things, try and start creating them into a tree. I, I personally, the best part for me has always been the actual using the data that I collect. I know a lot of surname studies just collect data. Well, that's to me not particularly exciting. I want to be able to see it. No, like I can see behind your head there, Emma. It looks like a family tree chart behind your head. <laughs> I want to see something like that. So I I do my, my silicons in terms of building the tree so that then if... <laughs> Heaven, heaven forbid somebody ever writes to me and says, hey, I'm really interested in silicons. Then I can straight off the bat go, it's that tree or it's that tree. And we don't have very many trees, but at least then I can go, right, you fit into that tree there. And I can tell you way back to Dennis, who was born in 1600 and whatever. So, so yeah, I would start with whatever you have at the moment and start creating those other alternative trees that don't fit at the moment. So on WikiTree, you're going to just add those profiles and Separate. add your one name study category to it. Mm -hmm. So have you created your category yet for your, your name study? Yes. Okay, so add every time you add a category with the surname, add the, add, every time you add a profile with that surname, add the category. And you can even break the category down into, um, uh, like on the Templeton one name study that I have going, I have them broken down geographically as well. So I'll have that's a good way. Mm -hmm. Templeton name study dash Lawrence County, or Templeton name study dash uh, York County, or or you know South Carolina. I can you can you can use our category system uh, in a lot of different ways, and the database will do some work for you. Also, Roz Haywood says that she is willing to help you, so give her a shout. I'm going to yeah. shout. <laughs> Yell loudly. <laughs> uh, you know what I think that we need to do is we need to have Kirsty come back. We need to get Kirsty's name, Silifant name study over on the wiki tree and get it working. And then we need to get Kirsty back to do a uh, feature live cast and have her work on the one name study for some people during that. Would you be willing to come back yeah. and do a talk with us? On Absolutely. One yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It would be fun. Just, we are just going back, Emma, to your Zorn's question. Um, in terms of your study, have you looked in the UK, or are you just looking in? What, where have you looked at it so far? Well, right now they're in America. We think they came from Germany, but okay. that's kind of where the, the proof gets shaky. Yeah, there's only two families in England, so you're fine. 
<laughs> I can literally create you. I can create you two little little mini ones over here. I've just literally put it into free BMD, the free births, marriages and deaths. And there's is in 1946 and has two children and one guy who marries in 1962 and has two children. That's it. That's it in all of <laughs> with this wow. with with the with that one spelling. I only did it with Z O R N E S. Is that, that Russian spelling. or Czech or what kind of name is it? Could that? be. I think it might be. It might be a sort of a Jewish kind of. Yeah, could be a Jewish one. There's only one with Z O R N S. Oh, so birth in 1975, you'll probably find he's still alive. Wow. You can have a real person to talk to over in the UK oh, and go, I, where's your Zorns from? I could literally probably collect all the Zorns. Yeah. Period. In 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 this country very quickly. <laughs> I I don't think you'd find any in a census, judging by my very quick rudimentary search there. Yeah, in her very quick rudimentary searches, um, she did one for uh, a fellow who works for Living DNA because uh, they had some extra oh. time together and she found family secrets for him in about five minutes and he's like I've got to go home and talk to my granny yeah <laughs> we've ordered a whole pile of certificates and stuff as well since we've been back because we flew back on the same flight that's fun so. that's fun well Kirsty yeah, I want to thank you so much for being with us today and you're going to come back and do a pleasure. one name a surname study and we're going to get your silophant study over on the wiki tree Good luck with that, Max. So have I told you how I actually store my trees for my elephant study? I don't want to know. I will do it. Don't worry. <laughs> I am not. Okay. I am not afraid of you. <laughs> so not afraid of you. Okay. I'll just tell you there in Microsoft Word. <laughs> I am not afraid of you. Oh my God! We have to update you. We have to update you. <laughs> All right, Emma, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, everybody who joined us in the chat today. Thank you so much. We are so glad that you came. And we hope you learned a lot about conferencing and then a little bit about One Name Studies. And it's obvious that we need to have Kirsty back. And Kirsty will be back. And uh, somebody says, I can't wait to get Kirsty back again. So people Dude, like you around I'll pay you 20 later. bucks or whatever, whatever you spend. <laughs> No, I think you owe me about a hundred from the last time you were here in town. No, I don't. Rubbish. Oh, yeah. It was a thousand. It was a thousand. Sorry, I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Have fun. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you soon. Glad you're back, Mags. You yes, too. <laughs> Oh, she's disappeared. We just lost Mags. What happened? I think she might have pressed the wrong button. <laughs> she's done with us. <laughs> she's done, but she hasn't actually stopped the thingy. What's it? Oh, shoot. Is she going to pop back? And... Shoot. I need to tell her. Oh, wait. I gotta tell her I'm here.